Welcome to part one of the Day of the Dead Girl video. I've got a aluminium composite panel here that's black, so it's got the black core. I've just wiped it with some Prepsol or wax and grease remover. Make sure you clean that off and then you can um, rough up the surface using a grey scotch pad. Once I do that I'll wipe again with the degreaser and then after using the normal wax and grease remover I just go over with a post sanding cleaner from House of Colour. Now I'm using some masking tape by 3M. Just mask up a border. And I'm ready to go with my airbrushing. Next step we're going to draw up the design. So you can see there I've I took a photo reference of this Day of the Dead Girl. So I took the actual picture, printed it out and then I just um, drew on top of it the actual Day of the Dead Girl marking. You can see there I used a tack rag just to get any dust off before putting down the application tape which I'm going to use for masking. So I'm going to transfer my design onto that. Um, as I showed you earlier there was some chalk pencil on the back of that um, but at this stage of the um, design what we're going to do is just transfer the outline of it and then I can cut that out and then I'll transfer the actual chalk pencil in the centre. So you'll see here I'm just tracing back over that with an HB pencil. So just do the outline. And then this bit we will, this will be like our cut line, which I'll then cut out the, uh, the shape and then remove the positive section, leaving the negative mask of the application tape. I think from memory, this is a medium tack application tape. You can get it from any sign supply shop. So you can see there I've got my outline drawn on. So now with my X-Acto knife or any sort of hobby knife, I'm just going to cut neatly around that. Be careful not to go too deep. You just want to cut through the application tape. You don't want to cut right into the aluminium composite panel and damage the board. So just removing that positive area. It's a good idea to keep that as well. You might need that at a later date just to mask it off as a positive. Now with some more green 3M tape, I'm masking off the excess there. And now I'm relining up my original reference, which has all the, the back of it chalked on, which I did um, on a light box. And now what I'm doing is just roughly tracing over all those areas. You can see here I'm virtually just colouring in everything which will then transfer that chalk pencil onto the, um, the composite panel. And I'll have my artwork all sketched out. So I use this technique quite a bit for Harley tanks and all sorts of different methods. If the artwork's obviously big enough to just do a computer print like this, um, then I'll use this method. So you can see there my artwork's all drawn on and I've got a pretty accurate sort of um, sketch there. Now I'm just going to use some transparent base from Trident. A bit hard to see there, the camera focusing. And all I, you can use any sort of binder. It doesn't have to be transparent base. Um, I'm just going to spray that over. All it is is so that when I do start airbrushing, um, it just protects the chalk pencil. So that's all the binder or transparent base is, is going to do. If you don't do this, obviously, there's a good chance that when you press down for air, the chalk pencil is going to, majority of it is going to dissipate if you don't do this step. So. so now I'm up to airbrushing, and I've got some true white from Trident. 
in my CMC Micron airbrush, CMC Plus. And as with my other um, videos, you can see that I'm basically just airbrushing. I'm getting a foundation down, but certain areas I'll go brighter. Um, but I'm trying to sort of leave gaps so that um, I can see all the other detail that I still have to add in. So you'll see as the artwork progresses, and as I add more tones, I'll still have my, my guide. So this is just to get a bit of a base coat, that's all. So just keep working in that white. Now, with all the Trident colors, I like to thin them out with the reducer. Um, some of the kits come with a reducer concentrate which is basically 10% um, concentrate and the rest uh, you can use bottled water. Um, even tap water works, but um, bottled water is recommended to make up your reducer. So I do like to run them quite thin, the Trident colors, and I find that they perform a lot better that way. It's just getting used to the fact that they do run a bit um, finer when they're reduced. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. So it might mean that you need to do more coats slowly rather than trying to get an instant coverage. Um, but yeah, I find they, they perform really well as you'll see in this video. And um, you definitely get less tip drying as well if you do reduce them quite a bit. I also strain all my colours. So just um, a paper strainer is what I usually use. Same sort of thing as what you'd use for um, straining into a spray gun. I've just got a smaller version that I like to use for the um, airbrush. So all my colours I do strain. So a lot of people I know don't do that, but I find it definitely helps. So you can see I'm just building the white, shaping it, adding the main bright areas relatively solid, but you don't have to be too accurate in this step. It's basically just your, your roadmap to your artwork. And again, if you are going to brighten up areas and you are running the paint relatively thin, you can see I'm coming back over sections to brighten them up. So I'm allowing that first couple of coats to dry off. I'm not saturating it all in one hit. So I'm building it up in, in softer layers and, and white will obviously get brighter and brighter because it's an opaque color. Um, so yeah, just build your layers and um, if you need to use a heat gun to speed up the drying. So you can see I'm going a bit brighter there on the front of the neck. And I'll even start adding a bit of like um, hair strands and detail to the hair areas with the white. So just where those highlights are, I'll pick up some of those strands and then sort of feather them out, even just dusting over the other areas just to give it a bit of bit of a base. So just keep working that in. Okay, so now we've finished the white. We're going to use, you can see there, white, yellow, red I've got and a bit of reducer concentrate. So I'm actually going to um, mix up a flesh tone now. So I'm starting with some reducer. This reducer's already been thinned out and I'm adding some white to that. There's no specific ratios. I t tend to sort of mix by eye. I don't have any specific ratios that I use. You can see there, a couple of squirts of yellow and a few drops of red and give that a good shake and then just adjust as necessary. So if you think it's um, you know too pink or too yellow, then just add the corresponding or, or knock it back like I just did there. I added a bit more white and then a bit more yellow. 
so I thought it was a, a little bit too pink. And then just once you're happy with the colour, then we're going to start coating that flesh tone all over the fleshy areas. So just coat that, get a nice relatively even coat. It should be fairly good coverage because it's got so much white in it. So you can see here it sort of covers quite quickly. But again I'm doing light coats, leaving the air on all the time and that's assisting to dry the paint. Now I did lose a bit of my detail from the original sketch because the flesh tone is pretty heavy and I did that white step as well. So to get that detail back in there now, all I'm doing is lining up my original sketch and the, there should still be enough of the chalk pencil on the back of that paper there to transfer st straight through onto the, um, onto the artwork. Make sure that the flesh tone that we've just sprayed is dry enough. So I'm just going to check that cobweb design on, on her forehead there, make sure that's transferring and it's working quite well. So I just go ahead and I'm just going to draw straight over the top of any areas that I want to transfer. So anything that's been lost with that flesh tone step, all we're doing now is just transferring that back on. So just so I can see where I'm going with the next tone. So now that I've done that, I've, as you can see here, I've just cut out the whites of the eyes on that paper. I've made like a paper mask. And I'm just going to spray now into those negative gaps of the eyes, the whites of the eyes, with the, the Trident True White. So just to get some brightness back in there, I just thought I may as well do it while I've got the, the actual um, original sketch here. I thought I'll use the, the paper there and just cut them straight out of the reference and spray them in. And then I'll come back in later and detail back over it. So you can see there it's just sort of lined them up a bit better. And it's given those, the whites of the eyes, nice brightness. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm just mixing up a, a brown. So a darker tone that we can use for shading and defining and bringing out more tones. You can see I am um, just added some yellow, some red few drops of blue and a drop or two of black and then we're going to mix that up check the color I've also added a fraction a little bit of reducer just so that it's nice and transparent so we'll start building all the tones using this this particular color again if you're not confident and this color is too strong and too much of a, a variation from your last tone mix up a tone in between so just add less drops of um, black and um, it won't be as dark so it'll be a bit easier to work with. You can see now I'm just starting to build all the details using this particular brown mix that we've just mixed up. As you can see, I'm just working that brown into the cobweb design on her forehead. So take your time to build up all the detail. Just be as accurate as possible. And the good thing is now that we're airbrushing all of this back in, And that way I'm not going to lose it again when I add some of the white to the face to give that sort of Day of the Dead Girl appearance of that heavy makeup. So nice and close with your airbrush. You can see I'm, my trigger finger is constantly going back and forth. You might not be able to really tell because it's sped up in this video, but I can assure you that trigger finger is going back and forth the majority of the time. So I'm just nice and close and getting all that detail in there. Bit of a repetitive pattern. I mean you can use a, a template for this if you're not confident with freehand. But 
then if you are going to do that, just be careful that it doesn't look too masked. So just take your time and then I'm just adding that little dot in the middle of them all. So now go back to that cobweb. So you find it's easier to do it horizontally, or I find it easier. So yeah, remember you can flip your artwork. Obviously if you're doing this on a vehicle that might be difficult, but this is a panel so quite easy to flip it around and make it easier for yourself. So you can see I'm not trying to get the line perfect in the first shot. So you can see now I've added those details in. I can see where I'm going. And now I'm just going to build all the other the other tones gradually. So just add some of this uh, second tone into the hair. So some finer dagger strokes. You can see the color change there from camera to camera. Now I'm working in the eyebrow area. So I'm not just coating that eyebrow as a solid. I am actually doing smaller dagger lines within there and then um, blending back over it. Just working on the eye. Don't worry too much if you lose the white of that highlight, the um, dot highlight, you'll get that back in later. But you can see I'm just gradually building the tone, being careful not to run over any areas that aren't meant to be dark, especially where that nose area is. If you're not confident, you can get a freehand template and hold it there while you do those steps or mask it off. You can see here I just use the edge of that rose printout to get a bit of shading in there. So you can use paper masks if you don't have any freehand. Uh, templates. Just make your own. So just detailing that. Putting a few shadows in on the white of the eye and just adding in all the little fine details and I want to build up a bit of that bit of layering in there because I'm going to add the makeup around those areas. It's going to look a bit heavier. Give it that whole day of the dead look which is what we're going for. So again, detailing the eye nice and close with the airbrush. Be careful, don't pull too far back on your trigger because otherwise the paint will spider out. So if you need to sort of, um, you know, practice your lines, I always recommend practicing off your artwork and, you know, just go back and forth, do that line or that stroke that you want to achieve on your artwork and then when you get that right on your sample piece then progress onto it. So I even added some of the, the little eyelashes there so just all the fine details it'll really make it pop. Shadowing on the white of the eye. You can see I'm gradually darkening not just smashing it with color straight away. Just building it up, pulling out some of those shadows to give it depth and to build the tones. You can see it's starting to get a bit more of a 3D appearance. And then going back in and adding some more texture and rendering and then back over the top to darken those deeper areas in the corners of the eye. And there I just added some more texture as I will in that other area as well of the makeup. So now just picking out the nose marking, shading the tips of the nose and the nostril. So just blending that down. That's not just one dark spot either, it has a gradation. 
So just shaping that a bit more, adding some more shades to pop that nose out. So you can see it's starting to definitely get a bit more shape coming into the, the artwork there, just toning it. So again, building your tones, don't go too quick with it. Just take your time. Now I'm just picking out that lip area. Just running the markings. So it's a fun painting to do because you it's not just like painting a normal portrait. I enjoy doing these sort of more fantasy type portraits rather than just a standard um, replica of a, someone's face. I enjoy changing it up a little bit and adding your own sort of feel to it. So just there's a bit of a drop shadow under that nose. So like I said, I took this um, photo. So this is just a photo reference and then I drew the makeup on top of the photo. And from there I'm just airbrushing it. So I've, I am changing the tones as I go. The idea of this video is just to use primary colors. Um, and we just want to show you how you can build pretty much any artwork just using primaries and mixing your colors. So, you know, you can make everything from your flesh tones to your darker browns. It's all achievable with those five primary colors. So just building more of the tones. Picked up a little bit of dried paint there. So just bringing those cheeks out, putting the shadows in. Just gradually building. So continue to build those tones. So I'm just using that one brown color that we mixed up. So this is just all, all the variations are just by controlling the airbrush, different distances, amount of paint. So you can see if I want it nice and sharp, I'm up close and then I blend out for any of the softer areas. So take your time, don't rush, because this is the step that's really pulling out all of the detail. Constantly refer back to your reference so that you get it as accurate as possible. And I also tend to apply this to the um, this particular tone to the hair as well so that you can really see how the picture is starting to look. So little flicks of hair there, some stray hairs to give it a bit more of a real look. So I'm just adding some more texture there and I'm going to colour in the rest of the hair in a minute. Also there, add, a, add the um, necklace in, which is the detail. So that's pretty much it for uh, part one of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you in part two, uh, where we're going to add all the other tones and finish off this artwork. Thanks again for watching.